Welcome to Growing in Grace, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. And now, here's the host of Growing in Grace, Mike Kapler and Joel Barizaki. And welcome once again to Growing in Grace. I'm Joel with Mike, and we're getting uh, we're getting together to talk about the grace of God, growing in grace, His uh, grace that's not only amazing but is completely and utterly sufficient for every thing in life and God has given it to us in abundance and so uh, just with that uh, encouragement we're going to get started here Mike how you doing this week well so far so good Joel uh you know life is busy it seems to be going by faster they told me this would happen they said <laughs> wait till you get older it really goes fast and you know I think it's true as much as I do not like winter even though we live in a in a climate that that has plenty of cold and snow I don't really like it. Uh, even even winters uh, winters are starting to go by a little bit faster for me, a little faster. <laughs> well, uh, my job invo- involves a lot of driving, and so so far this one's not going by slowly. <laughs> we had uh, just a few days ago big ice storm, as you're well aware of, Mike, and I spent quite a lot of my day driving in that. And uh, long story short, I took this uh, little trip where I went to uh, three towns and it, the total journey was 80 miles all on highways and it took me three hours <laughs> and that was some that was just not fun and your body gets stressed and uh, your mind gets stressed but there's something about me Mike that I I just I love it I don't know I've been doing this job for 13 years and uh, the Iowa winters that we experience I don't know there I love summer that's my favorite uh, except when it gets really, really hot. But man, when you get to step out on that fresh snow, uh, and just hear that crunch under your boots, I love that. There's something about that that I love. And, uh, but eventually in these long, cold Iowa winters, I do, uh, it does get old eventually. But it takes me a while for it to get old. Well, I've always liked the crunch of the snow too, Joel. In fact, I've liked it. Uh, up until the time I was nine years old. Uh, after that, <laughs> I thought you were uh, going to about it. You, you know, like the, the thing Nestle about these ice storms, for those uh, who have had them before, you know that, uh, that, that the ice will stay around for a long time unless you get some real warm weather afterward, which we usually don't. And uh, the, the parking lots and everything, I mean, it, there's really not much you can do about it, just thick, bumpy ice. In fact, uh, somebody that I know fell down on it uh, yesterday. Hell. Uh, I wasn't with them at the time, but uh, they, you know, they hurt themselves pretty bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, they hit their head. I imagine. And, uh, not a good thing there. But, uh, Joel, I was going to talk just a little bit uh, tonight. I thought that uh, we could engage in a conversation about uh, just the goodness of, of God and uh, the fact that I think they're not that we have a, uh, we haven't uh, <laughs> cornered the market on understanding just how good God is in our personal relationship with him. I, I haven't come to the place where I really feel like I, I know God the way I would like to know him. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm growing in my relationship with him. I, I feel like uh, over, a, over a lifetime here on this earth, uh, I, I know him a lot better than I did uh, some years back. But having said that, I, I don't think we realize just how good God is. And if you've ever been to... Uh, a church sermon recently, there's probably a decent chance, depending on where your location was, that you probably heard something that uh, when you walked out the door of that church, you, you may have felt worse than when you walked mm. in, uh, wondering where you stood with God. Was God angry with you? Did you let God down? And and all these kinds of things that uh, keep people in bondage. And, and hopefully with uh, a few minutes of conversa- uh, conversation tonight, Joel, we can we can help correct that. Yeah, you know, one thing I've, 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 you know, when you're talking about um, going to to church services and when you walk away, do you do you feel better about who you are or do you feel worse? And I, I'm just thinking about, you know, Jesus and, and the people he encountered, and just just in in general, one thing that I've noticed that there there are some people who felt bad or worse when. After a conversation with Jesus, and I'll talk about them in a second, you know, the main people uh, that Jesus talked with who felt really good about themselves afterwards were the, were the ones who understood that they were sinners. They, they were ones that understood that they couldn't get to God by, by their own deeds or, or through their own, or, or through their own works. And so Jesus would 
extend grace to them and and uh, totally change their mindset around. But the ones that walked away not feeling as good about themselves as they had when they first met Jesus were the self-righteous and the proud. I mean, if you read throughout the uh, you know the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and, and you read about Jesus, uh, his encounters with people, those who were self-righteous who came to him either you know trying to prove their righteousness to him or or in some way or another were acting as if they were holier than everybody else. Those are the ones that Jesus had the harsh words for, uh, but yet he would wrap his arms around those who were really pretty bad sinners uh, in in the world's eyes, and and he would help them to understand that God loved them and that uh, his grace was t- generous for, for them. Uh, I'm just I'm just thumbing through Matthew, and let me just point out a few things about Jesus and and what he did for people. Uh, a leper comes up to him in Matthew chapter eight. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. What did Jesus say? <laughs> he answered the question. He said, "I am willing. Uh, be cleansed." And immediately the leprosy was healed. And and the stories go on. We're familiar with them. The centurion soldier wanted his uh, wanted Jesus to uh, heal his son. Jesus said, all right, I'll come on over. He says, man, you don't even have to do that. Just speak the word. I know you've got the authority. Uh, his uh, his child was healed. Uh, as, as I continue to look through all these, let's see. When evening had come, many were brought to him, uh, demon-possessed. He cast out the spirits with a word. He healed all who were sick. I, I'm just th- one after the other. Uh, mm-hmm. Take up your bed and walk, Jesus says to this one here. Yeah, Your faith has made you well. And the woman uh, was made well within the hour. And and it goes on and on. And and, and then we come to Matthew chapter 11, Joel, and I, and I find this very interesting. John the Baptist, who, you know, was the front runner to Jesus, so to speak, uh, he's in jail now. And he knows that his life is probably at an end. And he's probably, you know, to be honest with you, the human side of him is, is coming to grips with that. And he sends out a couple of disciples uh, to track Jesus down. And and they find him and they say, uh, you know, John wants us to ask you, are you the are you the one? Are you the one we're supposed to look for, or is there another? And Jesus had a way of answering sometimes without saying yes or no. And it seems like many times, whether we realize it or not, when Jesus answers a question, he doesn't say yes or no, but he'll answer the question and probably a whole bunch of other questions. And uh, most of the time, people don't even realize. Just how many questions he's really answering? You know, but I think says, that's one reason. John, why. the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And uh, there you have it. I mean, and Peter in the book of Acts, Joel, he said that Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. If you want to see what God is like. Take a look at Jesus. He's a manifestation of God the Father. And everywhere he went, he met people's needs. He never turned anybody down, whether their need was for for healing, uh, for forgiveness. If they were hungry, uh, whatever their need was, Jesus was able just to reach out. One of my favorite stories, uh, the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, they were going to stone her, and they tried to trap Jesus. They said, hey, the law says we should stone her. Uh, How are you going to wiggle out of this one? Jesus bends down, starts writing in the sand, and then says, hey, uh, those of you without sin, you cast the first rock. And uh, they all dropped their their rocks and and walked away, hanging their heads. And so uh, when they had all left, Jesus said, well, you know, who condemns you now? And she says, nobody. And he says, well, I don't either. Now just go on and don't do this anymore. You're forgiven. Uh, You can do better than this. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but this is this is God. He's your friend. He's on your side. He is not against you. He is not angry with you. Uh, God dealt with uh, his, his anger towards sin. He dealt with that. Uh, God the Father dealt with that on his son, Jesus, at the cross. He took all of his anger out. Imagine all of the fury and anger that God has against sin. He took all of that out on Jesus Christ. Uh, he doesn't take it out on us anymore. That's great news. Yeah, and as Hebrews 10, uh, 26, I think it is, says that if if that's not enough for you, then it, I don't know what is. I'm paraphrasing <laughs> that, too. <laughs> it's just like if the sacrifice of Christ isn't enough for you, then there is no other sacrifice. And, and that's what God did. You know, I'm, I'm thinking of John 3, 16 and 17. You know, you know, we read John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave 
his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And there is so much, you know, to, to, to glean out of that verse. And then John 3, 17, the following verse that we don't read as much, or at least we don't hear as much, you know, talking about, you know, we're talking about God's goodness here. It says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So, you know, in your relationship with Christ, if you're feeling condemned, I was listening to a a, a talk show, talk a radio talk show today, and uh, this this guy lately, he's been on this uh, talking about religion here and religion there, and he's he's talking about Jesus. He's joking, but yet he's using some of the stuff that people really perhaps think about Jesus, and he say, yo, he can zap you up. You know, if you do wrong, you just, you know, better be careful because he'll zap you. And, uh, you know, he's mischaracterizing Jesus, although he's joking. I, I think that some people really do think of Jesus that way, that if, if I'm not, you know, doing the right things, I'd better watch over my back because Jesus is there to get me. But God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the but that the world through him might be saved. That's God's goodness. He, he sent his son, and, and Jesus is in our lives. He's joined himself with us um, because he's good, because he, he loves us and he cares for us. And like you're saying, Mike, he, he went around in, in when he was in the flesh, uh, when he was on the, the earth for 33 and, and a half years, and, and especially during his time of ministry, during those last three years, that you know he would, fil- he would fulfill the needs of, of people uh, that weren't even expecting it. He would just, you know, the the 5,000, you know, just think about them. They weren't thinking, you know, they followed him out there into the desert, and they probably weren't thinking, well, uh, some miracle's going to happen today, and we're all going to get fed, but Jesus, out of compassion, you know, he, he fed them. So our God is a good God, and, and he shows it to us by sending his son on the cross and by sending his son into the world and, and showing us, how good he is through the deeds of Jesus. Well, I bet, I'll bet most of those folks who, who were fed, the 5,000, who forgot to bring their own lunch, <laughs> isn't that <laughs> typical? And then we're, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if these were the same people who were complaining to Moses. You know, well, you know, he brought us out here to starve and die and all of that. And, but no, here they were out there to hear Jesus. I'll bet most of those people didn't even realize what took place. And I wonder how often that happens in our lives, where we're wondering what God thinks of us and whether he's angry at us. And the whole time, without even realizing it, uh, many times God is there providing uh, good things in your life, including mercy uh, and forgiveness. It's, it's like in the uh, the Bruce Almighty movie, God, just give me a sign, <laughs> if you've ever seen that movie, and then all these signs, you know. There are there, but anyway, uh, we're right, we gotta end things for today, Mike. This has been a good one. I I really love it, uh, just being encouraged in, in the simplicity of the gospel and uh, of God's goodness. Because there, as we started off talking about early in the program, you can go into a lot of churches and you're gonna hear about this Jesus. You're gonna be, hear about this word called the gospel, but you're not necessarily gonna hear it in its truth, or at least not in its in, it, in its entirety. Uh, just the fact that God is good, that he loves us uh, unconditionally, and he is always extending his mercy and grace and his goodness and his love toward us. You've been listening to Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Barizaki, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. 